Welcome everyone to an all new episode of the Comic Multiverse where the worlds of nerd meet. I am your very congested host, Joel. Hopefully that doesn't cause too much of a problem. And joining me as always is my less congested host, Matt. How you going, Joel? How was New York Comic Con? It was crazy. It was freaking insane. I pretty much haven't stopped since I left. The whole last couple weeks is a blur. We were actually going to do this show earlier, Matt and I. We wanted to record this on Friday and get that up nice and early for the patrons. And I just looked at the stack of comics that I still had to do and the stack of shows I had to catch up on for review. And I'm just like, that's not going to happen. Yeah, I was very much the same. It seemed like everything premiered in the same week because it did. Yeah, and on top of that, we had like a uh, hell week of comics. Definitely, and it's only going to get worse because we got even more new number one Marvel Now stuff coming out next week, or this week, I should Uh, say, as we record this. That's true. I mean, what I've been up to has been well-documented and well-recorded everywhere on Instagram and Facebook and other channel videos. What, uh, What have you been up to, Matt, since last we spoke? Um, <laughs> trying to catch up on comics mainly. It's been rough. Um, yeah, it has been. That that's really, really what I've just been doing. I've been, you know, catching up comics on the TV shows that have all premiered. You know, you, uh, we had Supergirl and mm. all the DC shows start up. You uh, you made been, a solid attempt to try and cover each and every one of those, didn't you? Only for the classic CW dickbaggery to kick in. I know. Like, I really wanted to cover each one of these shows, these, especially since we're going to be getting the four-part crossover. I wanted mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. do each each and every show, but they don't like me reviewing. It's only they, – they're fine with me reviewing Supergirl and Flash. They're fine with that. It's only Arrow and Legend of Tomorrow. My Legend of Tomorrow it wasn't even uploaded fully before I got a strike. Yep. Oh, I, I know exactly. That happened to me all last season when I tried to review Flash. It's calmed down <clears throat> a little bit. It's calmed down a little bit, but I wouldn't be shocked if I get hit with a bunch of them in, like, a big lump sum. Yeah, so I just thought, like, I'll probably just do, like, Twitter reviews because yeah. they can't really put a copyright claim on that. And Yet. I, I can't I can't be bothered, you know, just doing a, re- a review up and doing all this time only to have it being taken down because of copyright mm-hmm. and every week sort of thing. Tell me about it. You're uh, you're braver than me. You actually watched the first episode of Arrow, even though this whole you know CW universe is getting all interconnected. And we're gonna have all these big crossovers. Really, I can't be bothered to watch just a regular episode of Arrow. And hilariously, you don't need to watch Arrow because Arrow ends up no. bleeding into the other shows. Yeah, the, the first episode was awful. Same as they, they it's, I was talking with Tom about it, and he's like, they they honor the, this hero that died that. Black Canary died and everything, apparently. Which is the and, dumbest um, thing I heard. I, 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 That hit me when I watched the new episode of Legends. I had to go back and be like, oh, yeah, they killed her, didn't they? What a dumb idea. And the, the way they honor her is making this statue that looks nothing like her out in the middle of some <laughs> random Vancouver pier. Like, really, And it's not even like a small pier. It's like one of those piers that go halfway out into the ocean. That's amazing. I, I kind of wanted to watch the first episode, if only because I think Cody Rhodes is going to be standing around for an arc, and I kind of wanted to see him, but I'm sure it will be dumb. Yeah, it probably will be. <laughs> Again, how I mentioned how Arrow bleeds into the other shows. You watch episode two of Flash, it's just Flash talking to Felicity. You watch episode one of Legends, and you see more of Arrow guy than you see anyone else. People were really pissed off about that Felicity thing, because it, it sort of mirrors how, in Flashpoint, how... Batman is the first one Flash talks to after the whole mm-hmm. Flashpoint thing, and mm-hmm. Felicity is the first one he talks to. He immediately goes to Felicity, not like the people he knows, not, you know, Caitlin or Cisco or Joe or anyone, goes straight to Felicity. He, he can't tell them the truth, but he can tell them the truth. Yeah, as much as I love the Flash, Barry was making some dumb, boneheaded decisions in those first two episodes, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he caught the bad decision bug. Uh, you know, Legends, of course, uh, my uh, reviews of that were well documented of how that show made me pull my hair out, and I was really debating whether or not I was going to review it again this season. I still yep. might not. But everyone said, no, 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 Joel, check out the first episode of season two. It's a lot better. Yes, they concentrate on the stuff I liked about season one, more funny costumes, more, you know, historical figures. But the time travel still makes no logical sense, which is really annoying. And it, it makes no sense within the confines of, like, we've got Flash time traveling exactly. as well. So, like, why isn't, like, Jay Garrick turning up to the team saying, stop fucking with the timeline? Yeah, please stop doing things. It, it's kind of hilarious, too. 
how we're two seasons in now and they're still dealing with the same problems of being a team that they were dealing with in season one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, the highlight of the episode, though, was that Rory got, like, the spotlight. And he, he's my favorite character just because he he's so shit. Yep, exactly. H him and Captain Cold were the only two good characters because they had simple, understandable motivations that they worked to accomplish. Yeah, they were evil, and they want money and fame and glory. Perfect. That's it. That's all you need. That's exactly what they should be. The one smart idea, and hey, spoiler for those who haven't seen Legends yet, is they did away with horrible, ineffective, limp-dicked leader Rip Hunter, finally. <laughs> or at least they seem to have done away with him, because let's face it, after the last season, he avenged his wife. He has nothing left to do. Yeah, he doesn't really need to be here on the show anymore. He should have just passed the torch over to someone else. I, like, they're kind of teasing that he might be gone, but I'm sure they might bring him back for whatever reason. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I, I think they're testing the waters now, because here's the thing about Legends. One, it had too many characters. Two, they had no real good motivations. Like, again, Rip, he's like, what do I do? I, I fly the ship. Well, apparently even Rory can fly the ship, so why do we need you? Yeah. <laughs> I will say the JSA looked pretty cool, though. They did look pretty cool. And the, the one thing that really bugged me about that, though, is that they're, they're taking um, our man's word as law. And he yep. just, like, he came to them, talked to them, and then, like, disappeared, never showed up again. Yeah, we never so, saw like, anything else. I, why are they trusting this guy they don't know who is, who traveled through time? Because he had Hasn't, hood. like, any of the team learned that people who travel through time usually are evil? <laughs> <laughs> but he had a hood mat, so you can trust him. <laughs> <laughs> also, didn't you think it's funny, too, where it's like, oh, man, season two of Legends of Tomorrow, it's our big team show, it's the big special thing that it has going for it, what should we do? Uh, well, we're, we'll introduce a new, better, more interesting team in the JSA, that's what we'll do. <laughs> Who will be in it for, like, two episodes. Also, also, you can't even say, like, being a team show is special now, because Arrow is a team show now with multiple super-powered and vigilante individuals, and even Flash is getting to that place where are so many different members of Team Flash have superpowers. Yep, and so is Supergirl. Yeah, and Supergirl is getting there, too. Freaking Jimmy Olsen is going to become Guardian. That, that costume looks so crap. Guardian's costume always looked shitty, though. Is the thing. I, 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 I like the one he used during the new Krypton, how it's kind of like that armored look they go have the show, but it was like the gold and blue and everything. Right. And why is it all white? Yeah, because it's easier than blue and gold, I guess. But it, it yeah, it's, they're, they're hit and miss with those costumes on that show. They got really Superman's are. costume that looks good, Martian Manhunters look good, mm -hmm. Red Tornado looked fucking awful. Banshee looks good. Yeah, yeah. But everyone else looks terrible. I did like that new Superman. I did actually make a point to watch the first episode of Supergirl. And even though, much like Arrow, I don't think it's a show I'm going to keep up with beyond crossovers, that was a kick-ass Superman. Oh, it was perfect. He's a bumbling Clark Kent who loves all of mankind, and they even drop Perry saying, Great Caesar's Ghost. Yep. He's best friends with Jimmy. That's probably one of my favorite lines of the episode when Supergirl's like, how did you know that? Oh, well, you see, it's my super telepathy. It's a power you'll get when you're old. No, Jimmy told me. <laughs> Which is funny because he actually did, back in like the 50s, have super telepathy. He sure did. If you could think of a power, Superman probably had it. Also, hey, Metallo. How cool is that? Metallo showed in the first episode. So awesome. And he had an accent like he should. Yep. Love that. That was some good old-fashioned Superman stuff, is what that was. I think that show will really turn it around this season, even if I don't watch it all the time. Now, yep. uh, believe it or not, Matt, we actually did have some news. As uh, as you had mentioned previously, I was at New York Comic Con. A shit ton of news and trailers hit, and I couldn't enjoy any of it because I was actually on the floor, which meant I couldn't see any of it. <laughs> which is an odd thing where everyone's like, oh man, it must be great to go to a con, you know, as part of work and everything. No, it's not, because, like, even though you're having fun on the floor, you need to read all the stuff that, that night when you get back to the hotel and be like, okay, what actually happened today? And, it, and it's really strange as well, because the stuff usually premieres there, but mm. the people who go there don't necessarily see it. It's the weirdest Catch-22. It's one of the yeah. weirdest occupational hazards yeah. of working online that I've noticed, but... Uh, one of the big things that happened while I was away, and I'm sure you saw it too, we got the first Iron Fist trailer, or the first official Iron Fist trailer. Yeah, and it was pretty, it is coming really soon as well. It's coming in March. I know, it's only a couple months away, which is hard to believe, and we're going to get Doctor Strange before that too. Yeah, Doctor Strange in two months, in two weeks actually. 
That's fucking insane. I had a friend ask me, like a friend I went to high school with, he's like, hey man, I'm back uh, in town and everything. Hey, you want to go see Doctor Strange? And I'm like, sure, that's not for a while though. Then I looked at my calendar. Oh no, wait, it's at the end of the month. It's coming up. It's coming up. I had just assumed in my mind that it was so far away, but no, it's not coming up. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Iron Fist looks really cool. I like they don't screw around and they show you the glowing fist and everything. That was really cool. They call him the man who touched fire and everything. And I hope I hope that means we'll actually get to see a goddamn dragon in the show. I think we will or something that looks like a dragon. He might he might end up having like a fever dream where he imagines a dragon that's there and that's like his, you know, Star Wars stepping inside the tree of insight moment. Yeah, yeah. Or they could do, like, that movie version of Merlin thing. Like, there is a dragon, but it's, like, a robot. It's, like, an automaton meant to look like a dragon, and it's all, like, a test. I'm fine with either of that. <laughs> I'm fine with all that. The actor seems to do a pretty good job. He might not look 100% like comic Danny, but he does seem to embody a lot of his goofiness. Like, that's the thing about Danny from the comics, is that he's kind of a weirdo and kind of a goofball. Yeah, well, no. Well, the people were saying that when they saw the footage in the in the hall, that they they showed scenes about Danny, who, who's obviously been away from the world for quite some time, uh, having f his first interaction with like touchscreen phones and oh, everything, nice. and it's it, they said it's pretty comedic. That's cool, like a man out of time thing. Now, obviously, the question, yeah. as with every Netflix show, how long do you think we're gonna have to wait until he puts on the costume? Uh, it'd probably be like Daredevil season one, like the last two episodes probably. or so. Probably. That's a thing. I like Luke Cage dispensed with it early on. It's like, hey, look, I'm wearing the costume. Now I will go continue to not wear a costume because my character doesn't wear a costume all that much. <laughs> they, they got lucky on Luke Cage. They lucked out on that character. <laughs> they did. Uh, I liked you. They made a point of being like, yep, he's got the he's got the Iron Fist dragon tattoo on his chest and everything. Yep. I, w I wonder, do you think that's, like, going to be his, like, proto-costume? He's just going to take off his shirt and beat people up? <laughs> I could see that. Make it like a Yakuza game. He rips off his shirt in a single go and then just punches people. <laughs> and uh, and speaking of Iron Fist, the, the big tagline, I'm sure you noticed this, Matt, too, they called him The Last Defender. Yep. Which is, of course, a reference to Captain America, the first Avenger. And speaking of Defenders, they announced who the villain was going to be for the big Defenders show, which will only be eight episodes, and it's Sigourney frickin' Weaver. I, that's it's so weird. Talk about an actress with some nerd cred, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely got that going for her. They have not mentioned who she was, and this has surprised a lot of fans who assume, like, oh, well, a villain to bring all these together. Obviously, it's got to be the Kingpin or the Hand or something. But no, it's Sigourney Weaver as a yet-to-be-named character. Uh, is there anyone, like, you could think it would be? I'm not really too familiar with all these characters as villains. I would assume, if I had to guess, and this, this is what I was theorizing with the guys at New York, and they seem to like my theory... One of the only big street-level groups we haven't seen yet is, like, the Magia. I could see her being, like, mm -hmm. the female leader of the Magia. Yeah, yeah, and I guess, like, the Magia was set up in Agent Carter as well. Yeah, well, that that was the other thing. That was the one thing they used to kind of shoot down my theory once. Well, didn't they already use them up there? I'm like, well, they mentioned them, so they could probably use them again and be like, hey, it's the future version. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it makes sense because Agent Carter sit during the 40s and everything, 40s, 50s, so, yeah. The, uh, the Magia, for those of you who don't know, is basically like this big, giant criminal syndicate. I think it's like the biggest traditional criminal syndicate in Marvel's New York, so it would be interesting to see them come up, have them be like, hey, guys, we've been balancing the books and everything, and turns out all these street-level heroes have been fucking up our money, so what do we do? <laughs> Let's go kill them then. Sigourney, you got this. <laughs> uh, so moving on from there to some news that got announced today uh, two brand new DC miniseries are going to be coming out in January of course uh, new miniseries are becoming a bit of a frequent thing at DC they had that Dead Man miniseries and that Hawkman miniseries yep yeah, I, I read the Hawkman one and I read like part of the the Dead Man one Dead Man one seems like something you get in trade because they're a bit long right but but the Hawkman one was really good. That's good. Yeah, I have it on my pile. I haven't had a chance to get to it yet. But uh, keeping with that trend of doing kind of fan-favorite cult heroes who don't have books but, you know, who people want to read about anyway, the first one 
which will be coming out in January, is a Captain Atom miniseries. You know what's really funny? The other day I was actually thinking, hey, where's where's Captain Adam and like ma- Major Force and everything? Where are all they guys? Because they they appeared like for like a little bit in the in the start of the New Fifty Two, then just like vanished. They sure did. And guess what, Matt? That's exactly what this mini series says it's going to yep. answer. Yep. <laughs> Where he went and why isn't he playing such a huge part now? And I would argue this could end up being a super important book because Captain Adam is the character that Dr. Manhattan is based on. Yeah, and he he's a pretty powerful DC hero. Yes, I mean, they, they don't write him like that anymore, but, you know, he's become Monarch. He's become these other huge characters. He's broken bad occasionally. I think you could do some interesting stuff with Captain Adam in a miniseries. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, especially after, like, Tom King's comments about the Watchmen starting to affect the next Batman issue, um, I think, like, this book, might, may, like, maybe, like, Dr. Manhattan, like, took Captain Adam, like, put him somewhere because he knew maybe that. that person was, like, literally his parallel and his kryptonite, basically. You're too fucking similar to me. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, you could kill me. Yeah. <laughs> Which, man, wouldn't that be a twist where they're like, hey, everyone, in DC Rebirth, Captain Adam is the most important character in the DC universe. That would that, that would be pretty cool. It would harken back to those old, you know, event books where it was always, like, the, the not the main characters who were the big, big uh, hero mm-hmm. of the story. It was always, like, someone new or someone who wasn't really... Uh, so, you know, you didn't think they were very capable of doing that. Yeah, it was the side character. Uh, I'm definitely interested in that. I'm probably going to give that one a look. The next one is even more surprising, and that is it's a mini series focusing entirely on the Amazons. Yeah, this is it's like a prequel book. Yes, in the days before, uh, what is it? Before Wonder Woman was even born. So it's like Hippolyta and a team of Amazons going on a mission fighting the Norse gods. Apparently, that it sounds pretty cool. Sounds very outside the box, I'll give them that much. Yeah. Sounds incredibly outside the box. But yeah, those are two really interesting offerings that DC has uh, to offer. Man, you gotta hand it to them. They've really reinvigorated their universe, they've given a shot in the arm, and now they're giving cult side characters a chance to shine, too. It's fantastic. It's what everything... It's everything that New 52 was missing. Yeah, absolutely. Now, hey, here's here's my question, too, both for you, Matt, and for people listening. If you could pick a lesser-known DC hero who doesn't currently have a book to get their own miniseries, who, who would you give a miniseries to? Ooh, um... Booster Gold comes to my mind. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, Booster Gold would actually be pretty cool. Uh, Lobo, even. I'd like to see what Lobo has been up to, especially because they've kind of split the difference on new young Lobo and classic biker <laughs> Lobo. Let's just have a story with him. Now, again, make it five issues. It doesn't have to be high art. Just make it a cool action story with Lobo. I think you could do something fun with that. Uh, I wouldn't mind the um, the Kryptonian heroes Flamebird and Nightwing. Mm. They had the world. They had a world's finest book back in the day. Yeah, why the hell not? Give uh, give them a little something. Give them a little love. I'm all about that. Uh, now, next up here, we have some more phenomenal news. We have like a couple stories here that relate back to the teenagers with attitude. The first and probably uh, biggest one. From this week, it was a rumor, but now it's officially announced. Power Rangers Justice League is going to be a thing from Tom King, no less. Tom Taylor. Oh, Tom Taylor. Sorry, there's too many Toms to keep track of now in comics. <laughs> but yeah, Tom. Yeah, I, I think this book's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, Tom Taylor, the frickin' Injustice guy, is giving us Justice League v Power Rangers. Oh my god, did someone read my dream journal when I was six? Now, are we going to get the Justice League morphing? Oh, Matt. Oh, Matt. Don't play with my emotions like that, Matt. (laughs) Superman picks up the red dino coin. It's morphin' time, and Superman becomes a Power Ranger. That's too much power. That is. Oh, my God. He could wreck the universe, and then Wonder Woman picks up the pink power coin. It's morphin' time. And Batman's like, I want to be green. I want to be green. Let me be green. No one else touched the green one. But Green Lantern's like, but I'm the Green Lantern, though. I should be the Green Lantern. Fuck off, Al. It's me. (laughs) <laughs> Actually, I say Hal, but it's not Hal on the team. It's John Stewart. They're going with a, something closer to the cartoon team. 
Yeah, it's a very interesting team. It's it's him, it's Cyborg, it's Wonder Woman, it's Batman, and it's Superman. Cyborg looking like he looked more in the Teen Titans, where he's more humanoid than in the comics right now, where he's more robotic. Mm -hmm. It's a nice touch. Also, that looks to be a more classic Batman with the blue cape instead of the black cape. I wouldn't be shocked if these guys had trunks, too. Oh, God, yes, please. I am all about this. The story, as it is solicited is apparently Zack the Black Ranger ends up falling into the DC Universe somehow. I don't know how he does it. I don't care how he does it. I'm just happy that he does it. <laughs> this feels like the fodder of a death battle, too. Like, you know, can the Red Ranger fight Superman? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> like, like, what actual powers do the Mighty Morphin errors of Power Rangers, you know, uh, have? And does that, you know, make them able to stand up next to the veritable demigods that are the Justice League? It, it would be very interesting to see. Because, look, I love the Power Rangers, but they basically all have the same types of powers, just different weapons. The Justice League has a varied set of powers. Yeah, so it's going to be an interesting setup. That's really cool. That's really awesome. I can't wait for this. I'm sure Matt will love it because it's Tom Taylor. I will love it because it's Power Rangers. <laughs> like, literally, this... Like, if we could pick a comic, Matt, to be, like, the premier comic multiverse comic i think it would be this one and it's not even out yet i know it, it sounds amazing i can't when does it come out is it, is it obviously coming out next year but uh probably sometime to coincide with the movie i imagine oh yeah that's true and speaking of the movie <laughs> we got the trailer and <laughs> matt you talk i'm too angry <laughs> well what they did was they 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 got the breakfast club and chronicle and just cut the trailers together and just mash them together that's all they did you know at least it's nice to know they fucked up everything in the trailer so i don't have to get my hopes up i don't have to go see the movie and be disappointed it looks really generic at least they put their foot down and said look we're gonna piss on everything you loved about the original right here right now in the trailer so you won't need to get mad at us later <laughs> just jesus christ man like i almost like if i was home when this happened and in fact i wish i someone had filled my actual reaction because i was around people when i saw it i i went to like misery to pieces so quickly and i wish matt and i have could have done like a breakdown of the trailer and if i had been around we probably would have but yeah like he said in the first five minutes they made the rangers into the breakfast club they're serving detention mm -hmm. Literally, like on the weekend, they go into that classroom, and there's that the the weird one, and there's mm -hmm. the 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 nerd kind of kid, and the jock. Yep. And oh. which which reeks to me of such lazy ass writing, where it's like someone sat down and watched the original Power Rangers, and they're like, "Hey, how can a jock and a nerd and a popular girl and an Asian all be friends at the same time? That's impossible." Yes, I, but Bill, it's 2016. Ah, nah, nah, I don't, I don't buy. But what if we just made them friends from you? No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, you know, we're gonna go to the Breakfast Club and we're gonna put them all together in the same room. Now, fix me another highball. <laughs> Well, okay, well, how do they get their powers then? Well, okay, in the, in the show, you know, they were just kind of teleported there when the Earth needed them. Nah, 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 there's no drama in that. They're going to go on a chronicle expedition to the Grove in Angel Grove, because that's what it's called, so we'll just have a grove. Is that is that what it was called? Because it just looked like that that generic quarry. At least the quarry is in, <laughs> it's a guest guest star in, in the movie. <laughs> guest star in the quarry. Well, I assume that was the Grove in Angel Grove, is what I assumed, because, again, I was trying to think like a hackneyed piece of shit writer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they find their power coins... Which, again, incredibly dumb, made me want to pull my hair out. And the power coins give them actual powers when they're not in the costume. <laughs> yeah, they do the old, they're going to break the sink. I hate that so much. How many terrible movies have we seen where they do the break the sink thing to show they have superpowers? And the water comes out, and it's funny, because they, they can't turn off the water. They did it in Wolverine <laughs> Origins. They did it in The Amazing Spider-Man. Why are you doing that here? <laughs> why did someone not slap your pen away from the paper or slap your hand away from your keyboard when you were writing that funny thing is this movie probably would have done really well five years ago oh yeah oh yeah oh, i'm sure it would yeah it's definitely like even the quote-unquote new ideas they're bringing here are old as shit 
Oh yeah, they're like generic, you know, origin superhero teen movie sort of things. This feels this feels like a script they greenlit not long after the original Transformers sat on it forever and haven't done anything to update it since. Well, like when the trailer dropped, Max Landis, who apparently wrote a script for this, like, like got all uptight yeah. about it. He got all uptight about it. I would I would much rather have seen the version he had in his head. I'm sure it was a much more interesting version. Yeah, yeah, you probably would have been. I mean, heck, even if that version didn't make it to the screen, I would much rather have his more interesting version. Hell, I hope he does for Power Rangers what he did for Ninja Turtles, and that is, hey, look, so here's the treatment that the studio didn't want, but I'm just going to read it to you right now and play some music while I do. <laughs> I don't know if you heard his uh, his treatment for a potential uh, Michael Bay sequel to Ninja Turtles, but it was really good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of them, yeah. Problem is, though, the, the last couple of movies he's done have been real stinkers. Yeah, they have, yeah, they have. I, I actually paid money to go see Victor Frankenstein. Oh, I'm sorry. Which, again, Victor Frankenstein, almost a good movie, but you can tell the exact second they wrestled control away and they ran out of money and everything. It's like, ah, and here's how it all went to hell. That's true, yeah. But yeah, so that's... The Power Rangers trailer. I, w I wish you guys could see in my notes right now for news. I wrote Power Rangers trailer, bracket, why God, why, question mark, bracket. <laughs> that's, literally, that's literally what it's here in my thing. Uh, I don't, did you see the trailer, too? There's going to be, like, a little video game for, like, uh, for the consoles. It's like a side-scrolling beat-em-up with the Power Rangers, the original team. Yeah. I'll just play um, Chroma Squad exactly. on Steam. <laughs> exactly. You know, they totally missed a great opportunity. Chroma Squad and the makers of this movie should have worked together, and they should have given you, like, special skins to actually look like the Rangers. For yeah, with, like, Squad. DLC that you could play out, like, scenarios as the Rangers or something. That would have been a million-dollar idea, but that would have been, you know, too obvious and too safe and too good. Yeah. So instead, we'll punch a bunch of money into this really chintzy, bullshitty-looking version. <laughs> that I'm sure people will still want me to play in. In fact, I might, I, I will, I probably will, even if I just turn it into a bitch session. Tell you what, everyone, when that game comes out, I'll try and stream that one if it's not ridiculously priced. <laughs> in fact, shit, uh, Matt, you, you have a PS4, right, Matt? Yeah. Hell, I can party you in on that one. We can both talk about it. Yeah, I, I have actually set my PlayStation up for streaming. I bought a 20 meter long Ethernet cable nice. and everything. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, I got an Ethernet cable one, too. It's been doing all right. I've been playing... <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but I've been playing Borderlands uh, 2 at night with my dad, of all people. He really wanted to play a first-person shooter. And I'm like, oh, man, I got to record this. He's really good at it, actually. That's awesome. I've been playing Mafia 3. Me, too. I've also been playing Mafia 3 this week. How far are you? Uh, not too far. I haven't had a lot of time to play it, but... um. I just recruited yeah. the, three, uh, the three lieutenants. I'm I'm past the amazing paint it black cutscene. I oh know that. Oh my god! I'm past that. The the use of music in this game they they shelled out some major coin for some great songs. There, yeah, there's some amazing music in that game. Like every song on the radio is a perfect ten out of ten. I know some people have complained that they said the mission structure gets repetitive later on. I can't really deny that. But I'm so engrossed in the world and the characters that I want to see it through to the end. And when you actually get to, like, the big quote-unquote boss sections of the game, that's really great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's some good stuff. But, uh, yeah, moving on from there, we have... Oh, this is a funny story. Uh, th this is a funny story that might actually uh, t take a little bit of a refresher for some people. Do you remember, Matt, uh, a while back... Uh, the creators of uh, America Chavez from the mm -hmm. Marvel comics, they wanted to do a solo series, right? You remember that? Yep. But Marvel said no. And so mm -hmm. they got so angry and so upset, they're like, fine, we're going to go over to Image Comics and create a character who is basically just America Chavez and everything but name, and we're just going to do that. <laughs> yep, I remember that. That's what they were going to do. Well, guess what? Marvel turned around and said, well, guess what? Fuck you guys. We're going to do an America Chavez Miss America series anyway, just to spite you. <laughs> so expect to happily enjoy and read that series that was made solely on spite, despite the original creators. Yes, I can imagine it being very quality. This is a this is a classic old school comic book dick move, the likes of which we haven't seen in a very long time. 
It is. It's, it's a real big dick move. This is like when the creator of Howard the Duck got so mad at Marvel, quit, created a brand new character called Destroyer Duck just so he could get the proceeds from that to sue Marvel to get the rights to Howard the Duck back. <laughs> and then when that didn't work, he agreed to a crossover between Dr Destroyer Duck and Howard the Duck, only to swap the characters out in his part of the crossover, and then say that that character was the real canon character, and the other one was a fake. <laughs> this is good stuff. This is, this is quality, like, dick measuring. I love it. Yeah. So good. You know, again, I like Miss America as a character. I liked her when she showed up and stuff. I thought she was a fun character. I thought, you know, she could really go places. But I don't want to read a series that was greenlit entirely out of spite. Yeah. They're not very good series, those ones. <laughs> no, I, I want to read the ones from the creators who actually cared and actually wanted to tell a story about an interesting character. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a big wall wall. <laughs> is what that one is. Uh, moving on to a story that's not Walt Wall, and a story that I'm sure you will want to talk about in great detail, Matt. Uh, so Darth Vader ended, was it this week or last week, Darth Vader ended? This week. This okay. week. My review actually went up yesterday, I think. Wicked. Okay, so Darth Vader ended at issue 25, which is amazing to think that they ended a Darth Vader book only at 25. It is, yeah. And there was a big hullabaloo about what the book that was going to be taking its place, what it was, it was originally called Star Wars Classified, but that turned out to just be a placeholder title. Turns out the next Star Wars book we're all going to be getting excited about is Dr. Apara. Aphra. Aphra. Is that how it's pronounced? Aphra? Yep. Aphra, yes. Dr. Aphra, who you will remember as the supporting character, kind of off and on again, friend of Darth Vader in that book. She's getting her own book now. Yeah, and, and with the release of this, this is kind of a spoiler for issue 25 because she apparently dies at the end of that. She doesn't. She gets blown out of an airlock by Vader, and um, she gets picked up by her two droids, and they go off and going to have adventures in this book, I guess. Awesome. So this... This is the first of, like, this is kind of a big moment, because this is the first time they created a brand new character in this Star Wars Marvel Universe and then spun her off to do her own thing. Yeah, oh yeah, she's been very popular. Very, very popular. People do, really like her. Do you think this is going to start setting a precedent now? Do you think they're going to start spinning new characters out of, like, the main Star Wars book or out of the miniseries? Do you think they're going to start spinning characters off? Maybe, maybe. Um, I guess they, they're they trying to see which characters will work. And I guess Aphra, who's been in since, I think, issue three in every single Darth Vader issue, um, <laughs> I think that they're, they're just trying to work out. Like, I think maybe Sana Solo might get one because mm. she's been in a couple of arcs now. And she has. Maybe, maybe if people like her. I know people didn't like her to begin with because they thought it was actually Han's wife and then that turned out to be a con and everything. But, um... I, I really like her, and I think she should get a book as well. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of cool side characters that they've introduced, even in that Han Solo mini series, like all those racers that he's following. Yeah, around. I'd happily read about their adventures. Yeah, and also this book's going to feature the, those two droids, Triple Zero and, and um, BT. I, I, I was saying like they both need an ongoing series, and it <laughs> looks like they might get one sort of. Nice, nice. So I, once again. Great time to be a Star Wars fan. Yeah, we got this book, and I think that I think there is actually another Star Wars book coming out at the end of this year Ooh. as well. I'm not, I, they haven't announced it yet. Maybe it comes out next year or something, but there's definitely more coming because the Han Solo series is finishing, the Poe Dameron series is finishing soon. All, all minis. I guess they need another one to be a new ongoing. Yeah. You know what I would love for them to do, but I don't think they're going to do it because they don't want to step on the toes of what Disney animation is doing? Just just give me a Rebels comic to read. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd like that. They, they insane that, like, it'd be really hard to do, though. It would be. Yeah, it, uh, maybe, like, one of, like, the other... Oh, I guess they want to save them for the show. I was going to say, like, you could do one for, like, characters, or, like, a Sabine comic and... <laughs> Hera, but they want to save the their stories for the show, I guess. I guess, and Hera's already been, you know, showcased in a book. It's funny, I was <laughs> going to say Sabine, too, because she's been in all these episodes that have focused on her, and yet I feel I know nothing about her. Yeah, yeah. and I think that they're going to address that this season. I would hope so. Yeah, because there's going to be some upcoming arcs that deal with, like, you know, uh, Mandalorians who have pledged uh, their service to the Empire. Yep. 
I mean, heck, they had that whole episode uh, just recently this season of her going in undercover to recruit Wedge. And I'm like, oh boy, we're going to actually learn about her time as an Imperial cadet. No, no, it's all about Wedge, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, that was a good episode. It was a good episode. Man, the show has been looking so good recently, hasn't it? Like, it always looked good, but now it looks extra pretty. It's always good when you visit new planets. Absolutely. And like, I, and like the first season, how they just stayed on the same planet. Just Lothal, <laughs> just Lothal all the time. Yeah, lots of new and interesting planets. Uh, I like, too, with Wedge, the restraint that they had with him. They never mentioned Tatooine, which I like. Yeah, yeah, they, they do mention, though, like, um, uh, his parents did own like a shipping company or like they they were like haulers mm. and that's something from the old canon as well that they've sort of brought back in you know which I, I thought was really cool. i can already tell right now matt if i can predict so ezra had the vision of two sons right mm -hmm. and now wedge is hanging out with them assumedly in the same area wouldn't it be hilarious if ezra just offhandedly mentions yeah and i had a vision about two sons only for wedge to pipe up and be like huh two sons that's kind of like back on tatooine <laughs> that would actually be pretty cool and we're like, whoa, 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 what was that wedge say that again? Yeah, we got two sons on Tatooine. You didn't know that? <gasps> Let's go to Tatooine. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> but no. in saying but in saying that, I'm like surprised that like someone like Kanan or anything hasn't mentioned anything. Like two sons. That sounds a lot like that sand world yeah. I visited back in the day. I, I, I honestly, as much as I say that, and as much as it is to fanboy and geek out about, I hope they don't go to Tatooine. I really, I really hope Rebels never goes to Tatooine. Yeah, I, I could see them maybe like like hinting at it for a future episode or a future season, but yeah, I don't really want them to. If they do, I want them to stay away from the Lars homestead. Yes, if you go to Tatooine, find a good ass reason to go there and don't do that. I mean, I go, guess go to, go to Jabba's palace or something. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you could. Oh man, you could make a great episode in Jabba's palace. Oh, that would be amazing. And you could even, like, have people in the background talking like, oh, you hear that crazy uh, Kenobi out there in the wastes? Yeah, they're cutting out water tax. <laughs> yeah, really, that would be good. I'd be all for that. <laughs> I would be all for all of that. Uh, I guess, too, while we're on the Star Wars kick, there was a new trailer there for Rogue One, too, wasn't there? Oh, my God, so amazing. Beautiful. Like, here's the thing. Gave me actual chills. I know that everything about it was great. The music, the the action scenes they were doing, and I, oh, I, Vader I, I, out of the smoke. Oh, and... yeah. I like, too, in comparison, and I'm sure you would agree, too, Matt, to the, like, Force Awakens trailer, which is, like, you know, being really ho hopeful and really upbeat, really, like, you know, Star Wars is back, Star Wars is here. Rogue One is, like, really dour and really sad and really, like, we are all going to die. Yeah, yeah, well, like, yeah, everyone knows the fate of all these characters, so... <laughs> don't don't get too attached to all these new awesome characters, because they are, as it is called, doomed by continuity. <laughs> Which, honestly, makes me more excited, because that's kind of like a magic trick, where it's like, you know, we're going to make you love these characters, we're going to make you sympathize and follow them, and then one by one, we're going to kill them all. <laughs> and be like, yeah, man, they were the real heroes of the Rebellion, not all these other rebels we see. <laughs> Yeah, that ah, oh, such a great trailer. Be here this December, man. That movie will Six, sixty days from today. Damn. I like that Star Wars movies have become like Christmas movies, or at least the last two are. Yeah, I, I like that. There's there's like two, a, a, like a year gap between the actual episode ones. Yeah, it's a nice feeling, isn't it? But we still yeah, and but in that year gap, we still get a Star Wars film. Totally. Uh, next up on the docket, we have, uh, this is an older piece of news, because obviously I'm working back in time here from when I left. Uh, the cast for the new Punisher Netflix show was released, and some interesting changes they've made. Yeah, I I'm sure you could probably talk a little bit more about it, since you're quite the Punisher fan. Right, so Microchip is going to be in the show. He seems to be mostly unchanged, and of course, at the end of Daredevil Season 2, Frank went back to his house and picked up that Microchip disc. <laughs> The big change and the thing that has people kind of freaking out, and indeed I was freaking out too, is Billy Rossetti is going to be in this. That's Billy the Butte Rossetti, a.k.a. the man who will become Jigsaw. Here they say now he was Frank's friend from the army, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, he was part of, was it Blacksmith or whatever it was? Yeah, whatever the weird uh, military company he was in, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, no, we don't know exactly what 
role he played as have they said like he was like an actual like soldier partner for frank or was he like maybe like a commander or something it's it's vague but that's what they seem to be implying yeah i mean i guess you could do the thing where it's like oh well he became a crime boss after yeah yeah used you, he's like the anti-punisher used all that stuff that frank knows to actually grow crime yeah, instead well, of erasing it which which is fine i guess for a tv show version but i'm like oh, but that's not really jigsaw though jigsaw is any other shitty mobster who gets put through a window and then he's like ah, i'm a super villain now because my face is fucked up <laughs> i'm basically a batman villain honestly I, li- I like how they did his origin in the war zone film oh, I love <laughs> we got like cut up in the bottle bottle crusher <laughs> love that love that one so much war zone is so underrated i think Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> like, Warzone is a hilarious, over-the-top action movie that pays great homage to the, like, cartoon Looney Tune levels of violence in, like, a Garth Ennis Punisher story. Yeah, it, it got shat on for no real reason. It, well, it did. It came out at a bad time and everything, and I think people, you know, had a bad taste in their mouth. I mean, heck, this is a movie where the Punisher punches a guy's head off with, like, just his fist. I love that. I love that he does that. That's hilarious. I love McGinty, who is actually a character from the comics. This, you know, black Irish parkour expert, all high on meth, who, like, one of his guys gets blown up with a rocket launcher by the Punisher. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. Again, I I think some people didn't know how to take that movie because it was, like, super serious one second, then, like, funny the next. Yeah, that's true. I like that one. Also, hey, Ray Stevenson, you're all right. Yeah. <laughs> You're fine by me, Ray Stevenson. But yeah, that's the Punisher show, which we know has to be coming. And now we- I think it's in 2017, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or they're going to push it until after Defenders. I guess so. I mean, do you think uh, do you think we're going to see like a big rollout for Phase 2 of Netflix? Do you think there's going to be a bunch of new shows? Or do you think they're just going to do like uh, Season 3 of Daredevil, Season 2 of Jessica Jones, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? I think maybe they'll do like some of the old ones like give some of them season three and then maybe do like one new one just sort of test the water a little bit because like i like luke cage and i haven't seen what iron fist is doing yet but if they just wanted to instead of giving each of those shows a season two i would be a-okay with fusing them together and having it be power man and iron fist season one yeah that'd be it yeah and it's technically season three but or season two of both those shows but it's season one of this new show as well yeah they're just hanging out together i would totally be fine with that because honestly having luke cage and danny Rand together you have way more material to draw upon if you would just have them be solo acts yep huh, so yeah we're actually catching up with all the news now and i'm getting more and more congested as i'm talking if you can't tell uh excuse me <laughs> Uh, c- con flu, man, it's real. Con flu, it's the real deal. O- always get your hand sanitizer. Always play safe. Always wrap it up. Uh, the next piece of news here, uh, Marguerite Bennett was named as the brand new writer for an ongoing Batwoman series that will be starting soon. Yeah, this kind of came out of nowhere. Sure did. Yeah, th- she's been really great Batwoman on uh, Detective Comics oh, and yeah. in uh, the Night of the Monster Man stuff, but um, yeah, it was really strange that they picked this one to sort of get a solo series. That they waited and then you know picked now. <clears throat> Not that I'm against it. Hell yeah, I'm all for it. Like yeah, said, oh she, yeah. She she's never looked better than she has in a uh, in Detective Comics right now. Is the real de facto leader of that team. So much to the point, Batman even said, "Hey, I look to you to look after this team, so I can just go be Batman." Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Marguerite Bennett, of course, is an excellent choice. I love what she's been doing. She kicks ass on bombshells. She's, you know, no stranger to writing Batman. In fact, her first, like, big uh, comics gig was, like, that Batman annual from the Snyder run. She's good friends with uh, James Tynan, who's writing Detective Comics. In fact, I was really lucky. I got to meet her in Artist Alley when I was in New York, and I got to say, hey, can't wait for Batwoman. Oh, nice. She's super cool. And she swears like a trucker. She feels like the missing member of this show, Matt. She would totally fit in here. Oh, yeah. I follow her on Twitter. She's wonderful. I'm like, hey, I can't wait to see what you do with that one. She's like, hey, fucking hey. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you swear like me. You're cool, Marguerite. <laughs> Let's hang out. <laughs> oh, oh, again, you were saying to you follow her on Twitter. You absolutely should follow her on Twitter. <clears throat> she tells some amazing stories. She says one person was giving her shit for walking with a cane. 
and they're like, oh, hey, do you do that as like some sort of weird hipster fashion statement? And she's like, no, I'm disabled, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so just putting fools on blast all day, every day. I hope she brings some of that to Batwoman, because I imagine that's like something Batwoman would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, fuck you. <laughs> Make her the hard-edged, hard-swearing member of the Bat family. I'm all for that. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, with that, we've been talking for almost an hour already, and we've just caught up on all the news from uh, from the week we weren't here. Mm-hmm. Huh, it's tiring work, man, I tell you what. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess with that, we could hop on over to what we read this week, and uh, it was another big, packed week, wasn't it? I, I still have stuff i got to catch up on. I'm still not even close to done. Oh, yeah, I've still got, like, four or five books left, but I've been pumping them out really fast. I mean, heck, there's shit I haven't even read yet that I need to do. (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's the thing. I've just been so tired and so hard working on, like, getting TV shows and everything else all done. I'm just like, well, I guess I'll leave that for a bit. (laughs) What uh, what, what did you want to talk about first there, Matt? Ooh, so many good books out. It's Um, true. It's a good time. Did... Did you end up reading Midnighter and Apollo? I did read Midnighter and Apollo. How good was it? That was a hell of a lot of fun, man. That was everything I wanted from that series. Freaking subway pirates. Yeah, they ride the train and die on the train. They and... ride the train. They kidnap children to crew the train. And I'm like, this is a great idea for villains. What? Why aren't there more creative shit like that? <laughs> Led by Captain Halfbeard. I'm like, why do they call him Halfbeard? Oh, because he has half a beard. <laughs> Uh, it's a fantastic book. It is. You know what? Like, I wonder, I was like, you know, did Steve Orlando write this series in mind as a mini or is this just like the next part of the Midnighter it really does feel like a organic continuation of like the Midnighter book yeah I said that in in my review like it just feels like the book just went on a little bit of a hiatus and just came back now it doesn't feel any different at all didn't skip a beat freaking Bendix is the villain in it again so there you go if you loved that universe it's here and it's strong yeah, and I like that he goes to the um, oh, what's that magic bar called? I can't. Remember. I'm blanking on its name. I know the one you mean. Yeah, he goes to that bar and he's like trying to hire demons to do his dirty work and take care of Midnighter and Apollo. And the only ones who would do it were the Lords of the Gun, which is a great name for a group of bad guys. I like it. There was DC guys in there, and there was also like Stormwatch characters in there too from Wildstorm. Yeah. So you had, like, Faust, and you had, like, a bunch of other characters. Clearly, Steve Orlando has an amazing working knowledge of the Wildstorm universe that he keeps bringing these guys up. Yeah, and it's only only right that he brings them back, because Stormwatch and, like, all that are coming back with that Wildstorm books that Garth Ennis is writing. Or uh, Warren Ellis. Oh, Warren Ellis. Which, Which makes sense. Apparently, the way they're talking about that Wildstorm thing, and I'm glad you mentioned it, too... They're saying that these universes, both, you know, Young Animal imprint and the new Wildstorm imprint, will exist within the DC universe. They'll just be away from, like, Batman and Superman. Yeah, yeah. Which is a cool idea and honestly how it always should have been. Exactly. I, You know, it took them a while to put it together, but they're putting it together, and I like mm-hmm. that. It's funny, though, when they mentioned all the new, like, Wildstorm characters who are going to be getting books. They're like, yeah, you know, Grifter's going to be getting a book, and this team's going to be getting a book. They did not mention Midnighter and Apollo, though, which I thought was funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine Batman and Superman holding Midnighter and Apollo back and be like, no, they're our cool friends now. They get to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't want to go back to your universe. They, they bought an apartment here, and they're going to hang out in our universe and be cool. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe they'll get to come back and play with you for a minute, but no, we've gotten really attached to Midnighter and Apollo. We want them to stay. <laughs> and stay they will. But yeah, Midnighter and Apollo was great. That was a, that was a real winner of a book. I'm, uh, I'm glad to see that, you know, that one kind of gets some closure for that yeah. series that was really, really underrated that you and I both enjoyed. Uh, what did I have going on again? Because I'm doing old and new comics together. I'm having a hard time keeping straight what I read and what I didn't. Uh, yeah. What was this week? What was this week? This week I had, oh, I guess All-Star Batman number three was this week. Yeah, I had that one as well. Cool issue. Cool stuff. 
yeah, they made they made KG Beast or the Beast really cool and actually a threat for Batman. They explained his powers, which I like. He's like, yeah, I got a cybernetically enhanced suit, a self-sharpening machete, a modified howitzer gun on my hand. What's Batman got? Fists. Yeah, bat knuckles. Bat knuckles. Punch, punch, punch. I don't care how cool you are. I'm Batman. I'm going to punch the shit out of you. Yeah, and they brought back Harold Allnut. They did. What a deep pull for Harold. I know a lot of younger fans probably had no idea who that character was. Mm-hmm. Or certain people would be like, oh, isn't that the guy from Hush who screwed Batman over? The answer is yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's that guy. He was also an 80s Denny O'Neill creation. <laughs> I wonder if somewhere Denny O'Neill saw that. It's like, hey, they brought Harold back, and Denny was just, like, sipping his coffee, like, good, good. <laughs> it's a good day. Good. <laughs> Where royalty checks continue. Yeah, really, Jesus. Like, he gets, like, 25 cents for Harold. Ha-ha, they used my character. Good. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you can guess what my favorite moment, though, of that all-star Batman was. When the royal flush gang shows up for a minute, <laughs> and it's just the royal flush gang from Batman Beyond. Yeah, and they just get killed immediately by the beast. And I'm like, good. That's exactly what should happen. I'm fine with all of this. <laughs> I like that hurts some people's brains where they're like, but wait, that's the future version of them on the floating cards. How can they be there and not in the Batman Beyond universe? I'm like, they're dead. Stop overthinking it. <laughs> F- furthermore, we have the female version of Copperhead from the video games show up in this, so also stop overthinking it. <laughs> also, this is the uh, like Duke's like first time sort of out and about yeah. as an actual Batman partner. Like Batman doesn't scold him for being out helping him. It's true. Duke uh, Duke probably did more in this one issue than he did in all of We Are Robin. Yeah, and all of Detective Comics. <laughs> yeah. I like him. He did a good job here. He kind of became the audience for a second because yeah. he's like, look, Batman, tell me what the fuck is happening. <laughs> and he's like, okay, fine, Duke, sit down and I'll tell you all about it. And he did. <laughs> and it was good. But yeah, All- All-Star Batman continues to kick ass. Some of the best looking Ramita artwork we've seen in this one, like when they're fighting close together. I like that, but then the, then he started like drawing Batman while he was standing and had patches all over his face when he was talking with Harold, and it looked really weird. Reminded me very much of Kick-Ass. Yeah, 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 the fight stuff did, yeah. It was totally Kick-Ass, where it's like, oh, it's Batman as Big Daddy as Batman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else did you have this week, Matt? Uh, I had Action Comics issue 965. Yes, a Lois-centric issue. <clears throat> I'm really glad they're going back to like these sort of issues where it was not just a Superman comic; it's yep. a Superman family comic. Mm-hmm. Everyone gets a gets a turn. Yeah, it was cool seeing her go. <laughs> she sort of just takes over this other Lois's life. Yep, and and no one cares, which I felt was kind of meta. Where it's like, yep, look, you got your classic Superman, you're getting your classic Lois now. <laughs> Yeah, and 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 they're having a confrontation with the Lana Lang Superwoman yes. now. I didn't think it would be this early. Yeah, all the I thought they would, tissues. not just this early. Yeah, yeah. All these Superman books are really building quite the rich tapestry, aren't they? Yeah, we haven't had anything on Doctor uh, Mister Oz in the last couple of uh, issues as well, so it makes me think maybe they're planning on something big soon. Maybe, maybe he's the one behind Genetatron. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe maybe that's his company, because again, the whole building disappeared as if via magic, and clearly uh, Mr. Oz has the power to make people and things disappear. That's true. That's true. Or it could be something that he needed, like he needed Tim Drake and Doomsday. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would be totally fine with uh, any one of those conclusions. Actually, I like the idea, too. Hey, maybe Mr. Oz was the one who created this extra Clark Kent. Yeah, yeah. Because his origin is still very much a mystery, too, where it's like, yeah, what the hell is your deal, extra Clark Kent? Yeah, they sort of explained it in the issue before, and but like it was kind of still very vague, where he, you see, he has memories that there was another Superman who told him to go into hiding. They, they basically just explained that he's not a threat, where it's like, look, you don't have to worry about him, he's not a bad guy. Beyond that, eh, we don't know. <laughs> Yeah, and it makes me think he actually is a bad guy. He's yeah. always the one you least suspect. <laughs> oh, God, wouldn't that be some shit? Evil Clark Kent fighting Superman. 
<laughs> that is oh, Superman three flashbacks. It's a it's a beautiful way for them to have their cake and eat it too. Where it's like, look, we have Lois working at the planet. We have classic Superman you remember, and classic Clark that you remember too. Yeah, and it also starts to wear away at the thing that everyone knows that Superman and Clark can have the same thing. Now they start doubting that. Yeah. So when that when that Clark eventually goes away. Superman can actually go back to being Clark. Exactly. It's kind of perfect the way they put it all together. Yeah. Like, a hat's off for actually thinking this shit through and writing yourself out of the corner you wrote yourself in. It's amazing when you just sit down and just think about things and how it comes about and actually makes a successful comic. Like they're doing with all these Rebirth books. They're thinking about it. They really are. Really, really well-handled Superman story. And I guess from that, too, we could talk about Detective Comics number 942, which was the finale of Night of the Monster Man. I liked it, but these last, like, two or three issues felt really rushed. They were just okay. They weren't, like, knock your socks off. They were solid event comic. They beat the bad guys. They beat the monster, and it was all good. Yeah, like that, especially like that stuff with Gotham Girl and Nightwing, how they turned into monsters. Like that didn't need to happen. That yeah. only happened so Duke could come and give him the serum stuff. Yeah, that, that was, was the only reason that happened. Yeah, l- looking back at that now, that was like just a little bit of filler. Yeah, that w- that was a bit of filler. I did like Hugo Strange's big speech of Fog, where it's like, ha ha ha, I put myself on a bunch of bombs, and if you so much as hit me, Batman, I'll die, but I know you won't do that because you hate killing people, so come at me, bro. Also, some of the stuff he was saying, you're like, yeah, I kind of agree with him a oh. little bit, where he's gone on about how Batman, how like everything like in his family and stuff sort of shatters whenever he touches it, and it does because he, he loses sidekicks left, right, and center, and... Uh-huh. You know, he's not fit for this, really. He said the perfect thing where he's like, yes, Gotham needs a Batman, but why does that Batman have to be you? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, shit, he's kind of got your number on that one, Bruce. What, 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 what rebuttal do you have? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, I'm Batman. That's my rebuttal. Yeah, and I, li- I love that he had Clayface cover the building and basically suffocate. Strange. I thought that was awesome. That's such a Batman moment where it's like, okay, how is he going to get out of this one? That's how he gets out of this one. Yeah. Yeah, he just, he, he makes Strange keep talking. The, the villain monologue did the villain in again. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful stuff. And when Clayface is like, damn, how long can you hold your breath, Batman, longer than him? <laughs> so good. Uh, what, what else did you read this week that you like, Matt? Um... I had Earth 2 Society issue 17. Oh, yes, your beloved Earth 2. Yeah, the, the, the Pandora's box got opened, and it's resetting the world. Is They're actually remaking the original Earth 2. Oh, wow, it's a big do-over. <laughs> yeah, because um, in this issue, they all the heroes are the only ones left alive, and they're in, like, some... They're in, like, this phantom zone like place that's just a blueprint of old metropolis how many times have they destroyed that universe or that world? <laughs> i know it seems I know. like that's like, all that ever stop. happens and and um they're being attacked by sandmen or sand men who actually look like the original wesley dodds with Ooh. fedora and the coat and the gun my favorite guide yeah and i don't know why they're being attacked by them. i don't know what the whole deal is with it we don't get told anything this issue but it was pretty cool. So, so pretty much all the reasons to love Earth 2 and all the reasons I kind of gave up on Earth 2 <laughs> all put together in one issue. <laughs> yep. Uh, what else did I have this week? Oh, uh, Deathstroke continues to be really interesting and really surprising. He had a fight with Batman this year. He did. He? And Rose had a fight with Robin, and Robin burned the ever-loving shit out of her, saying, you're a Hmong girl, and yet you're using Japanese swords. What's, ma- what's the matter with you? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's an excellent bird, Robin. That's good. That's savage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so much of this book of why I like about it is that, you know, where every other Deathstroke series has, like, kind of focused too hard on, like, oh, he's such a cool badass. He gets to just so many cool fights. This book is about kind of showing Deathstroke when he's not doing that. It's like him on a father daughter road trip. That's awesome. It is awesome. It's really it's really well done. And it's funny, too, because, like, uh, Wintergreen, who's basically Deathstroke's butler, for those of you out there who didn't know, kind of, like, psychologically profiles him and says, look, you know, he is a high-functioning supervillain psychopath. So when he calls you an idiot, Rose, he's not trying to be mean. He's just saying he cares about your life choices. <laughs> 
Also, he'd rather cut off his own arm than hug you, so you should you should probably try and hug him. Just saying. <laughs> it, I like it. It's really fucked up and really cool. Christopher Priest is doing great on that book. He was the perfect pick for it. That's cool. He's gonna Deathstroke is also gonna be fighting Superman soon, so I might have to pick up that issue. Yeah, that'd be a fun one. I bet. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how he fares against that guy. Yeah. Well, it's funny. The way he got Batman was like, look, I, I set a trap for him. Then I let myself get captured so that my other trap for his sidekick can happen over here. <laughs> I've got traps within traps. <laughs> uh, what else did you have, Matt? Uh, I had uh, New Superman issue four. Oh, yes, the Asian Superman. <laughs> this was a really cool issue. Uh, we got a, the fire. He, f him, and the, the Justice League of China fought the Freedom Fighters of China, uh -huh. and they're pretty awesome. One of them has a gun that shoots ghosts. Love it. Uh, the other one, Black Condor, which is the one that Keenan fought before. He actually has a really cool power. So he actually manages to stop the Superman by taking all the air out of his lungs. Solid. And, um, yeah, he fights the, the general guy who actually ends up being his father. Uh, see, I knew that was going to be a twist <laughs> yeah. there. The second his father showed up, like, okay, who are you actually, though? You're going to turn out to be a bad guy. <clears throat> but there's a really cool scene where the team, where the villain team break into uh, the prison that Dr. Omen has and free a bunch of uh, super, uh, Chinese supervillains, one called the Human Firecracker. <laughs> nice. Uh, who, who looks like Lex Luthor in Power Armor with, like, these... <laughs> gauntlets and everything and he ends up uh freeing a genetically modified starro oh no not a starro <laughs> yeah <laughs> starros are bad news you don't want to mess with those yeah yeah and, and uh, when i talk about some of the other superman issues later on i'll talk more about this superman because he's tied in with those issues as oh, well nice nice uh, again, I didn't read much more than that. Uh, I, of course, read The Clone Conspiracy this week, which is the beginning of that new Spider-Man event. Mm -hmm. It was okay. Yeah? It was just okay. They do seem to be screwing around with this idea about Gwen Stacy, though. Because there's a new Gwen yeah. Stacy clone, but like all these new clones, she has all of her memories, including the night she died, which they actually mm -hmm. retell the night Gwen Stacy died, but from Gwen Stacy's point of view in a backup in this story. Huh. And then the big, like, takeaway twist of it is when Spider-Man meets this clone, she doesn't set off his spider sense. Ooh, okay. Which, I don't know if this is them playing with the idea where it's like, but w what if this wasn't a clone, though? What if this was actually Gwen Stacy? How would you all feel about that? Yeah. I mean, I guess that would be interesting, but at the same time, I'm just like, really, really, we're just going to resurrect Gwen Stacy and run with that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess in fairness, I would have said the same thing back when they brought Bucky back to life. I'd be like, really? We're just going to bring Bucky back to life and run with this? But, okay, I, mean, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> clone conspiracy. <laughs> it can't be worse than the original Clone Saga. It just can't be. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, yeah, that was, uh, that, was that one. What else did you have happening? Uh, I had Superman, uh, Superwoman issue three. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, this time we found out that Lena Luthor is responsible for everything bad that's been happening. What a twist! Yeah, uh, she she's got her brother. She can she's she's now got a mother box of her own. Shocking. She can tr can control her brother's armor that he has, so she's like crippled him. Oh. And um, we find out that she she can actually walk and everything now as well. Um, and we find out that she can do that is because Lex stole the. Uh, Superman gene that was used to make the Keen and Kong Superman from Dr. Omen. Oh, it's all connected. And, Holy shit. Yeah, and put it in in the clone of her sister or something and everything. And then she, when he was off doing his Superman stuff, she woke up and ended up making a bunch of clones of Ultra Woman. Uh, Superwoman from the Crime Syndicate, I mean. Oh, oh, so that's why that one in the first issue was wearing an Ultra Woman costume. Yeah, they're bizarros of her. Holy shit. She's perfected uh, Lex's bizarro technique. Instead of taking five years, it takes five days, I think, or <laughs> a week a week or something, like, really quickly. Just just like a sibling, right? Ha ha, I'm better at bizarros than you. <laughs> <laughs> also, this issue featured a really cool team-up between Lana Lang, Superwoman, Steel, Natasha Irons, and Atomic Skull. Oh, wow. 
yeah, Atomic Skull kind of like ratted out Strikers Island as being the Guantanamo <laughs> of the DC universe. <laughs> All because, and this is this is again, this makes me think because Luther is still a bad guy because his men run that place now, and wow. they've turned it into a Guantanamo. They make the prisoners fight each other, <laughs> kill each other, and you know, they they take him out into the courtyard and hose him down with the hoses and everything, and just do evil shit to him. Yeah, just evil prison stuff. It's funny. That Luther's sister is now a big deal in the comics, just as she's becoming a big deal on TV. Yeah, it's it's kind of strange. Kind of funny how that happens. It's almost like they planned this in like some big long, uh, what is it? Some big long uh, rollout multimedia. <laughs> That's cool though. That's cool though that she's a, that she's a bad guy I like that. Yeah, and it's cool that they're connecting them all together. Kind of funny too. This idea that you know, if Luther is making a serious go at being a hero. Who are they going to try to have fill the Luthor role? Oh, we'll get his sister to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's clever writing. Yep. And it makes sense. Indeed. Uh, what else did I have happening? Uh, again, like I said, I didn't get a chance to read many books, and I'm behind on many more. Uh, Uncanny Avengers, number 15. This is technically the first post-Civil War II Uncanny Avengers team even though Civil War Two isn't done yet, but they're still dealing with the fallout of it in this book. Yeah, I, I didn't understand. Like, when I saw this, it said number one up in the corner, but it was Uncanny and Humans 15, and I was really confused it's, at, it's, like, it's what a, it was. It's a new thing they're doing for Marvel books. Now, they did it before in original Marvel now, but stopped doing it. It's This is issue one of a new story arc, but it's issue 15 overall. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, they remember they tried doing that before and then they stopped. Kinda, yeah. Like, it, like it wasn't a bad idea, honestly, because you know people always want to know, like, you know, what, what of this do I need to collect to get the whole thing if I get one out of order? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not a terrible idea. Here's hoping they stick with it this time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, it was a it was a pretty good uh, kickoff to the issue. It picks up exactly where fourteen left off. And that is the Hand Ninja Clan have stolen Bruce Banner's body. And they want to resurrect huh. him as like an evil ninja hulk to serve them. Oh no. So Deadpool essentially has to reunite the Uncanny Avengers team who have fallen apart because Captain America disbanded the team because he's, he's an evil brainwashed Nazi now. Mm -hmm. And the team is shockingly willing to do this. They're like, yeah, totally, let's go to Japan. And so they go to Japan... And they team up with Elektra, of all people, who is waiting for them, and they have a big fight against a bunch of ninjas to try and save Bruce Banner's body. Huh. It's actually really well put together. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I think Uncanny Avengers might be my favorite Avengers book. Oh, huh, that sounds pretty cool. It's well handled. Let's, let's see if just Avengers from Wade can live up to this. Yeah. I guess that one will be coming out soon, too. Yeah, did you read Champions? I did read Champions. That was technically last week, but yeah, I damn right I read Champions. Yeah, that, that's by Mark Wade as well. It and is. that was really good. That was a really good book as well. It was really good, and again, it was almost meta in the way Kamala Khan's like, yeah, our older heroes fucked everything up in that Civil War too. Let's try and get things back on track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, geez, everyone, let's try and be heroes who actually do hero stuff and not just fight each other. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Let's do it. But yeah, that, yeah, that that was a good one. I'm I'm definitely gonna be looking forward to what Champions does in the future. Yep. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm I'm trying not to be super congested, but I can't help but be super congested. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it funnier. <laughs> I guess so. It's like, hey, but welcome to the sick cast, everybody, <laughs> where we're all super sick. <laughs> uh, what uh, what did you have going on, Matt? Was that it for you this week? Because I only have like one other one to talk about. Yeah, I haven't been able to read any of the other books yet. I know, it's been such a big goddamn week. I still have Aquaman and Iron Man sitting around from last week that I need to catch up on. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, which I should really do Aquaman, because we got a new Aquaman today as this one came out. And I should finish Iron Man off, too, because infamous Iron Man comes out today. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> actually, actually, let's do that. Let's actually bring back an old segment that we used to have called the comic release schedule where we actually look at what comes out today. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. I know, I know Trinity 2 comes out. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Man, how, how good was that first Trinity? It was so good. I can't wait for this next one. Looked so pretty. I can't wait to see where they go from there. Okay, so... I gotta, I gotta go to next week because it's still technically this week as we record this on Sunday. <laughs> 
So we got, coming out from DC Comics, we got Aquaman number nine, Batman number yep. nine. Uh, Cave, oh. uh, Cave Carson has cybernetic eyes, if you're really liking that uh, young animal imprint. We got Dark Knight 3, The Master Race, number six. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have no interest in covering that. What about you, Matt? I, haven't, I keep forgetting it's even a thing. Exactly. I'm pretty sure everyone forgot that one existed. Uh, Green Lanterns, number nine. Green Arrow, number nine. Justice League, number seven. I freaking dropped Justice League, honestly. I, this new arc has actually been pretty good. I like this the, the first issue of this new arc. It's, it's more... Um, not not as big as the last one. See, not balancing a lot, lot of stories and everything. It didn't do it for me, honestly. Again, it's just like, hey, we're going to focus on the team not as a team. And also, hey, here's another like outer space threat that we had to defeat. I like that they're fighting outer space threats, but I'm glad that they, they've like drawn it back instead of like 50 stories as like two. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's okay. Uh, Nightwing number seven, uh, Raven number two. I like that Raven miniseries. Again, it really feels more like a Black Alice miniseries, and in fact, you hear stories that uh, Wolfman actually was working on a Black Alice series that didn't get picked up. Makes me think he might have just changed some names around for this one. <laughs> uh, Superman, number nine, of course. Trinity, number two. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening at DC. Lots of good stuff. Over at Marvel, we have... Uh, we have Amazing Spider-Man, number 20. That will be a tie-in event to the Clone Conspiracy slash Dead No More slash whatever. Uh, the final issue of Astonishing Ant-Man, Astonishing Ant-Man number 13. Man, I loved that book. That book was consistently one of the best things uh, Marvel put out. I can't wait till they get that in an omnibus collection because that was wonderful. Nice. Sad to see that book come to an end, but I guess that means Nick Spencer will have more time to concentrate on Captain America. That's true. Speaking of which, you got Black Widow number seven, Sam Wilson number fourteen, which I've really gotten into Sam Wilson. I really love that last arc. Was that the one where he turns, or where it's like Captain America is back and everything? Uh, yeah, but he was also fighting U.S. agent. Yeah. Which it's funny, you know. A lot of people complain about Nick Spencer. You know, usually crackpots are like, "Oh, he's just spouting a bunch of you know leftist hippie propaganda." And yet here, <laughs> Nick Spencer actually writes U.S. Agent as like a sensible conservative individual, and I thought that was kind of cool to have like a level-headed superhero who also leaned a little bit more to the right. I, I always liked U.S. Agent. Me too. I would it, like. Here's the thing: like if they spun out this version of U.S. Agent into a solo book, I'd happily read it. Yeah. In fact, you feel bad for U.S. Agent because he's getting stooged all over the place. The you know uh, American military industrial complex lies to him to go after Sam Wilson and says, "Oh well, you know, well if you fight Sam Wilson, you know, we'll we'll arm the soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan better." How does that make you feel? It's like, okay, fine, I'll do it. And then he's like, well, you know, Sam Wilson kind of kicked my ass. I'm thinking maybe he is the real deal as Captain America. Only for Hydra Cap to come out and be like, hey, true American. Uh, yeah, don't believe what Sam says. Go kick his ass more for me. But don't tell nobody or you won't get any America Day presents. And U.S. agents like, okay, sir. <laughs> so that was a good one. Uh, what else do we got going on here? Uh, oh, yeah, infamous Iron Man number one. That's the big new number one. <clears throat> Uh, Mighty Thor yep. number 12. Silk, which I actually think is a tie. Man, I'm sad I had to stop reviewing Silk. I just didn't have room for it anymore. Yeah. That was a book I championed for a very long time. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it for next week. So it's a decent enough week next week. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Yeah, lots of lots of books going on, lots of variety, lots of new number ones. Uh, what would you say you're the most excited about? I definitely want to see what the heck the deal with Infamous Iron Man is. Uh, yeah, and I'm really excited for Batman issue nine because Tom King said that that's the first issue that the the Watchmen's influence on the DC Rebirth universe is coming in. Ooh, also I should be excited for this too because aren't they going to Santa Prisca in this one? Yep, yep, they're yeah. going after Bane. Oh, I get to see Bane in a brand new costume that doesn't look like Dark Knight Rises inspired bullshit. <gasps> What if it, like, was? What if he, like, comes out of the shadow, he's got, like, a coat on and the face mask and the strap vest thing? 
that you that you would oh, be, Batman. <laughs> if that was the case, Matt, then you would be able to hear me cry all the way from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, no. Actually, I, I like it. The preview image we see, Bane wasn't wearing any costume at all. He was just sitting naked on a throne of skulls. Yeah, his his coat was in in the wash, <laughs> in the prison wash. He's got guys washing it. Oh, Bane does not do his own laundry. <laughs> I like, too, it seems like the reason he's kidnapped Psycho Pirate is, like, because he wants him to use his mental powers to make him feel good about himself. Pirate, make me feel good about myself. <laughs> I, I'm feeling really down. Some people wrote some really non-complimentary things on the Bane Twitter page. <laughs> some people, they, keep t they keep saying I'm a big guy. They, they keep making fun of my stupid coat. <laughs> can, you, can you make me feel better about myself, Psycho Pirate? <laughs> <laughs> Man, now there's a good supervillain power. Like if he made you feel good about yourself, but for a price, and people got addicted to it like a drug. Oh, uh, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, people just need a self-esteem boost so badly they're willing to pay a guy named Psycho Pirate for it. Yeah, I got what you need. I got what you need. I got them self-esteem boosts make you feel good about everything. <laughs> <laughs> you unsure about this election? You got the mortgage due? Kids yelling at you? Guess what? I make you feel good. <laughs> for at least 15 minutes oh geez that makes him sound like a prostitute <laughs> then he's prostitute pirate not psycho pirate <laughs> there's a name there's, there's a, a Frank Miller creation <laughs> prostitute pirate <laughs> Sa sails the seas of venereal diseases <laughs> did, did you see he wanted to do an old Superman book I'm like no of course no. He, did. He, he had a panel at New York and I really really wanted to sneak away to go sit in on his panel. I really did. <laughs> I didn't get a chance. Like, I wanted to ask him a question, like, one that I knew would get him in trouble. Like, hey, Frank, how you feel about, uh, how you feel about, uh, Hillary Clinton, Frank? <laughs> Prostitute! <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> hey, Frank, let's play a little, uh, word association. Street Walker! <laughs> <laughs> just like you know, just like some really leading shit to get him in trouble. Okay, Frank, foreigner Batman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have fun, me and Uncle Frank, don't we? Uh, <laughs> uh geez. And on that note, everyone, I I'm going to go drown in my own head fluids, but I think we've had a pretty decent first show back. Would you agree, Matt? I would, yeah. I think we had a good time. I, you know, I want to say uh, thank you to all the patrons out there who will be getting to hear this first as it comes up and is done and everything. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the support you guys give to help make this show happen. Thank you to everyone who dropped some change into my trip fund and everything. That was a lot of fun. I hope to make it out to more cons uh, to you know, really get to see the whole comic multiverse fan base. And I will say, Matt, we actually did have some fans there in New York who do listen to the show every week and do really love what we're doing. So I want to extend, you know, their uh, th their good vibes to you. Awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, people people were asking about us. So some person actually said, "Hey, you got to do a con in Australia next." And I'm like, "Yeah, maybe I should." So me and Matt can actually like film some shit and do like some live stuff for the show. That'd be pretty cool. There's some big ones out here. Yeah, I mean, and I've never been to Australia before, and it's, uh, what is it? It's it's our winter here, which means it'll be your summer over there, so that'll be nice. Oh, what is it ever? <laughs> yeah, I, I could actually go and take, like, a nice sunny beach vacation in the middle of the winter, which, as a Canadian, that would be a really nice change of pace for once. <laughs> to actually go somewhere warm. I've never been anywhere warm, Matt. Tell me about it. <laughs> what is that big ball in the sky? Why is it hot? <laughs> What's that big ball of fire in the sky? What can I do to please it? <laughs> I... Is that is that your god king? Is that Australia's god king? <laughs> yes, Joel. That is the god king of Australia, the sun. <laughs> he demands donations of fosters and shrimps <laughs> for his Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh god and on that terrible note everyone I think we can bring this show to the end <laughs> as always thank you for listening and subscribing and everything be sure to like favorite do all that other social network stuff be sure to check Matt over on his channel Fortress of Solitude I'm sure you got lots of great stuff coming this week don't you Matt I do I've got some really cool videos of reviews and other cool Superman related stuff coming out soon Awesome, awesome. Uh, as always, you know, for more comic reviews and everything else, keep it tuned here to the Cape Joel channel. Uh, we will be seeing you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.
See ya.